Tom Lukabell with us now, courtesy of ATIX, AAATIX.com, Iron Bowl tickets. One of the tougher tickets of the year right there at ATIX, 822-7382. What is up, Lugs? How are you? Well, for, I'm great, guys, and happy Thanksgiving. I hope you three turkeys are doing well. I got to go <laughs> back to... I got to go back to Lance's read of the gutter promo. I mean, that was dark, Lance. I mean, you get on your roof, you slip, you fall, you die. I mean, yes. holy smokes. I, I mean, if you ever needed a gutter block, I mean, that, that's the reason to get one. I just want to tell you how dangerous it is. Like, if you go back and you look at, uh, like, just numbers throughout society of how many people die falling off a roof cleaning their gutters, it's crazy. I mean, those are the, that's the less athletic portion of the population, obviously. Oh, I'm sure you would land on your feet, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. By the way, hey, hey, Brownie, what's, what's up with the tree shirt? Uh, Stanford, uh, I got this when we were out for Alabama Clemson at um, Santa Clara. Santa Clara. Santa and, Clara, yeah, okay. We visited the Stanford campus because we were staying fairly close to it, and I just got this in a bookstore, and it's a very comfortable long sleeve T-shirt. I have no attachment Stanford. to Stanford. Stanford's like the West Coast campus of Texas A&M. Everything's painted tan. Oh, I was so disappointed, So Luke. disappointed. I, yeah, Dunaway was with me, and I'd, I'd always envisioned the Stanford campus looking one way, and boy, it is <laughs> <No>. ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's bad. I did not like it at all. Um, all right. <laughs> we, we got a lot of games on the field, Lugan Bill, to talk about. Let's yeah. talk. I mean, you've been around coaching searches and everything before. On the field, Mississippi State and Ole Miss is a good game without all the circuits going on. How does yeah. it impact the game? Who do you like, Mississippi State and Ole Miss? Well, I think it's really important that Ole Miss getting Zach Evans back. It looks like they're going to have that one-two punch that made that offense so lethal for really three quarters of the season. And now everything doesn't fall on the shoulders of Quinsad Judkins or, or, or the quarterback either. And so uh, I think this is about limiting the offensive possessions for Mississippi State. I mean, you, you look at that game last week versus Arkansas. I mean, you rush for over 400 yards. You have 700 yards of total offense, and you don't even come close to winning the game. You have – Two touchdowns called back due to penalties. You commit, I think it was 12 penalties overall. Um, in order for Mississippi State to win this game, they're going to have to have some balance with Will Rogers in the passing game, and they're going to have to have enough possessions to do it. The way Ole Miss limits that is by continuing the trend to run the football, eliminate the penalties. And if you do that, I think that on the field, Ole Miss is the better team. Does A&M have any shot this weekend against LSU? No, I don't I don't believe so. I just don't think that offensively they can function to the level that they will need to function. And I, I think LSU's tasting it a little bit right now. I think they've got a vision of what's out there, what could be out there in front of them, very, very aware of how important this week is before you ever even start to look uh, to Atlanta. They're playing really good football in the month of November, which is what we're all hoping to do, right? As a, a coach or a team, you want to spike and, and peak at the right time. I, I think we'll see much of the same from Texas A&M that we've seen all year long. ESPN's Tom Lugabell with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. He's presented by ATIX 822-7382 for your Iron Bowl tickets there at ATIX 822-7382. Ohio State and Michigan are playing and Blake Corum's health becomes a massive story in this game. Normally, yeah. The, the one carry in the second half after the injury, I would just chalk it up to Jim Harbaugh being Jim Harbaugh and playing mind games, but they needed everything to win that game. So clearly he was not 100% in that second half. No, he wasn't. And I, I think the, the, the health of the running back room on the other side of the field at Ohio State's very important too. Um, you know, I think the concern for Michigan is they have not been able to create explosive plays. So when Corum goes down, they don't have a complement to that. You know, they haven't been able to just drive the ball vertically, create 20, 30, 40 yard plays, plays that result in points. Um, and then defensively, I think the thing about last year's contest was that Michigan physically whipped Ohio State, but they were able to do it because they could rush the passer with four, drop eight. They could affect the quarterback without having to bring pressure. I don't know if this Michigan defensive front is built the same way. And so what you've got to guard against is. Let's just say you have Blake Corum on offense and you kind of are what you are if you're Michigan. But defensively, you've got to get C.J. Stroud off schedule, off platform. And if, if you can't do it with just a four-man rush like they were a year ago, now you're going to have to put yourself in some one-on-one -on -one situations in the defensive secondary. And that's where Ohio State has advantages with their weapons. And so I think there's a really salty taste in the, in, in the mouth of Ohio State's football team off of what happened last year. 
I, I like this game being one of those down into the last two possession type of scenarios. But if you don't have a full, healthy Blake Corm at Michigan, what's the answer for them offensively? Because they have not been able to come up with a compliment to want to that all year long. Uh, I'm I'm interested. We'll get back to some games on the field in a second, but you know, there's a possibility of Auburn and Lane Kiffin, um, him building a staff, a staff, a coaching staff. Jeremy Pruitt's out there, and I know the NCAA and everything. But if a, if a coaching staff could get Jeremy Pruitt on there, what does Jeremy Pruitt bring as a defensive coordinator? Forget being a head coach. If he could be back in Tuscaloosa or down at Auburn with Kiffin or Saban, what do you think of Jeremy Pruitt, the defensive coordinator, and what makes him so good if you see him that way? Well, what's made him so good in the past is at Alabama, Florida State, and Georgia, they had better players than everybody else. <laughs> I mean, at, at the end of the day, I mean, honestly, how do, you, how do you build up to earn a spot, to earn the next job? It's by having uh, good players, in many instances, great players. And so now all of a sudden, you're a great coach. But I think where Jeremy Pruitt's all, obviously been successful, he's been you know, successful as a recruiter. And um, that's something that is really important in this Auburn search right now, really important to the future of, of Auburn, because we've seen in the past that you're capable of luring top level talent to the, to the planes. That top level talent in turn has played for what two national championships in the last 15 years, one, one. Um, so it can be done, but it is about recruiting. And, you know, if this discussion is about Lane Kiffin, um, Lane knows as well as anybody in this conference, the makeup of the conference, that it's going to begin and end with recruiting. I mean, that's uh, we can talk X's and O's all we want. We can talk about, you know, preparing a football team each and every week. But if you're taking the field and you don't have the horses in the stable to run the race, then you're going to be extremely limited. And Lane knows that as well as anybody. Uh, Luke and Bill, we continue to doubt each and every week TCU and USC and both continue to survive. Do you think one, both, or none run the table here? Um, I, I think both are really, really capable. I'm a little bit worried about SC against Notre Dame um, this week. That, that one scares me a little bit. You know, TCU, the thing that I like about TCU is they haven't been in any type of game where there's an environment that they haven't encountered, right? They've been riding the lightning the whole entire season. I said on my Sirius XM show on Sunday – what would they do if they got up 35 to nothing? Like, I feel like they'd be looking, what, what, what do we do? What, wait, hold on a second. Do we, we, we don't have to, we don't have to run our, our field goal team out there. Wait a minute. We don't have to get a fourth and two stop twice. We, I mean, I don't know what they do. Right. And so this is who they are. And what do coaches always say? We have to win on the road and we have to win one possession games. That's what they do. Now I think, Iowa State's a bigger challenge than people think because it's the best defense in the Big 12. They just haven't been able to put it together offensively. And then, of course, Kansas State's a big challenge. The, the, the problem with SC and the difference between SC and TCU is TCU is far more of a complete football team in all three phases. SC is Caleb Williams. You take Caleb Williams off SC's roster, they are a five and six football team. That's how bad they are on defense. And it's getting clouded and it's getting masked because of this guy wearing an S on his chest every single week. And I don't know if you guys are paying attention. If you're not, you need to start. If he doesn't win the Heisman Trophy, I, I think Drake May blew it against Georgia Tech last week. I still think he should go to New York. But you take Caleb Williams off of that USC team and you see what happens. And so SC is going to have an opportunity with Notre Dame and then a ranked Oregon or maybe a ranked Washington in the Pac-12 championship game. I think the way the season's playing out wouldn't surprise me if both end up coming out unscathed. Yes. But the way the season's playing out, somebody could get tripped up as we've seen each and every week. <laughs> ESPN's Tom Lugabell with us on the Johnston RV Center.com. They are clearing out the 22s to make room for the 23s. Means you save I-65, exit 304 in Coleman, 334 indicator. Always online, JohnstonRVCenter.com. He is presented each week by eight ticks. 822-7382 for ATIX, 822-7382. Let's talk Iron Bowl. You can get those tickets uh, for the Iron Bowl there at ATIX. If you're at the game and you're watching this game, it, it's this seems oversimplistic, but Robbie Ashford in his last three games under Carnell Williams has not completed double-digit passes. What stops defenses, Luke's, from just committing every possible player to the run, playing straight man and saying, until he beats me two or three times, I'm not going to respect the pass game. 
Nothing stops zero. you. From doing, zero stops you. <laughs> I, listen, I think the thing that you've got to be you got to be careful of if you're going to take that approach, and Alabama's got the players to take that approach, is it's difficult to play man across the board. All right, play cover zero, cover one, and account for quarterback run. That's the thing you've got to be able to do because if if you're going to have to stop the quarterback run as a compliment, you're not worried. You're daring Auburn to throw the football. You're you're essentially saying. Robbie Ashford, we don't think you're good enough to throw the ball into a tight window versus press coverage down the field and win more often than not. Not only do they think that he's not capable of doing it, they don't think Auburn's skill is capable of separating and running away. And and I wouldn't either. I mean, well, last week, what, they were 9 of 20 through the air as, as a group of quarterbacks? I mean, this is they're, – they're so one-dimensional. But, listen, it's a rivalry game. Cadillac Williams has held that thing together. I think the kids will play hard for him, um, but they need a couple of good things to happen to him. And guys, as I said to you for years, and it's really bored out to be true this year, hasn't it? If you're going to beat Alabama and you don't have the same personnel, what has to happen? They need to help you. And Alabama has helped an awful lot of opponents this year. And it's also cost them. And so who knows? Will we see a clean Alabama go out there and take care of business, not be heavily penalized, not be undisciplined, protect the football? If we do, they're going to run away with this thing. If they help Auburn and let them linger, then maybe we have a heck of a football game in the second half. Moving forward, Logan Bill, what do you think, Nick Saban, how do you think he attacks the portal? Because you look at USC, and I read this morning, their production from the transfer portal, and you've probably seen this, is crazy. 96% of their passing yards from the portal, 88% of their rushing yards from the portal, 76% of their receiving yards from the portal. I mean, you can flip a roster immediately. You can. The problem in what you just referenced there, the problem is it's none of the guys you just referenced for SC right there play a snap on defense. And so, yes, you can turn it around. You can wave the magic wand. You can improve. And you're right, Jordan Addison, Mario Williams, uh, uh, Travis Dye, obviously he's down and out for the season for SC. If, if you're Alabama in the transfer portal, and, and I still firmly believe this, you fist the transfer portal if you're absolutely convinced there is somebody in there that is head and shoulders better than what you currently have. And you're not often going to find a lot of those guys when you're one of the top three or four rosters in college football. The vast majority of college football teams can find 10, 12, 15 players. Ole Miss did it last year with 17 guys that they felt were better than what they currently had. And they were right because it transformed their roster. So if you're Alabama, you're, you're going to look for that next Jameson Williams, right? You might look for another lockdown tall corner that might be out there that you think can help you. But I don't think you just do it for the sake of doing it. Like, I, I don't disagree with Dabo Sweeney's take on the, on the transfer portal. I, I think you still build established depth, depth through the high school ranks. You're still going to get the elite level player. But if there's something out there that you're convinced makes you better, then you go attack it. You're Alabama. You've got a tremendous opportunity to land that guy. But I, I understand this push to say, well, we've got to be more active in the transfer portal. We've got to be more active in the transfer portal. But you also got to then ask yourself the question, why is the guy in the transfer portal? Could it be that he wasn't good enough to play at the place he was already at? Could it be that he's a problem? All right. Could it be that he's a journeyman? Could it be that he doesn't want to compete? You got to ask those questions too. So it's not as black and white as everybody thinks it is. All right. ESPN's Tom Luke Bill, two quick questions. Which game do you have this weekend? I've missed this. So two weeks ago, I got assigned to what we thought was going to be an 11 and one North Carolina versus a nine and two NC state. Ouch. Mm -hmm. And both of those teams decided to not comply with our requests. Nevertheless, got a good one on ABC at three 30 on Friday. It allows me to be home actually on Thanksgiving, which is extremely rare. And I get to drive to the game. So oh. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Very good. Uh, that's a, that's a great defense in NC state and a great offense oh, yeah. in North Carolina, but uh, NC state's riddled with injuries, man. They yeah. have been oh, they have on their been... fourth QB. We might see their third. We're hoping that he's healthy enough. The freshman and, yep. and MJ Morris. Yep. Hey Lance, you watching any shows, pal? Yeah, yeah, I'm watching any, Tulsa uh, King. We talked we talked about it. I, I awesome. I told these awesome. guys, and, and you brought this up. This the comedic element with Sly yes. Stallone in this is so good. And I think episode two was even better than episode one. But I told these two, I, I they've got to watch it. 
That it, it's I've never seen Stallone like this ever before. It's so good, and even it's a deviation from Taylor Sheridan on his other pro, uh, projects. Yeah, you know? I I agree. And uh, boy, and Stallone, man, at seventy five is still ripped. Looks great, ripped up. Just and he's so good in yeah. that role. I, I mean, but I, I agree with you. He is ripped. There's no way he'd be in the baseball but, hall but, of fame. But, though. but I'll tell you, <laughs> <laughs> after you go, look and Bill, I've got one that is my favorite right now. Dunaway is watching. Okay, so I just got on to this 1899 on Netflix. I've seen it. Um, yeah. I, you have? Rockstar, Rockstar has. has. We yeah. are two episodes in. Rockstar, you like it? What are, you, I, are you kind of intrigued? I've only, I'm only two episodes in. Uh, we're, we're two episodes in. I like it. It reminds me, did yeah. you ever watch the first season of The Terror on AMC? I did not, but it's, I watched Dark, and Dark yes. is the same people that are making this. Correct. The problem is there's 50,000 different languages, so you have to really focus. It'll say somebody's talking in Danish, somebody's yeah. talking in German, somebody's talking it's in It's called Spanish. subtitles, bro. Yep. I have it on subtitles, but the thing is it's just so – there's so much to follow, like, because it's, uh, it's, that's the only thing. And it's, it's very creepy and everything, but it's good so far, two, two episodes I, in. I, I came across it. I'll try it out, but White Lotus is uh, right there with Tulsa. Is it good? Right. Oh, it's, it's great. It's great. Okay, good. Yeah, I've been putting it off, so I might check that out. I was, I almost got in my hot tub this morning because it's finally cold enough here. I, I might do, I might do your show from the hot tub next. Please week. do oh, that. Yes. We beg you yes. to do that. What do you think? Week. Next yes. Wednesday, yes. Next Wednesday, hot tub. Yes. Uh, yes, Luke. Let's do it. Do I'll it. Keep the bubbles to a minimum. That we don't care. Just be <laughs> in the hot tub, Luke. All right, uh, that All is right. ESPN's Tab uh, Luke Bell. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, Luke. We'll see you next week. Same to you guys. Always enjoyed. Have a great week and happy Thanksgiving. All right, buddy. You too. Luca Bill on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. A is presented by ATEX. AAATEX.com. 822-7382 for your Iron Bowl tickets. I was talking to Steve yesterday. They're looking at the weather there, but they got tickets there at the Iron Bowl uh, for the Iron Bowl. So you get those at ATEX. AAATEX.com. Luke's was on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. 